welcome to the SNA Gaming Studios YouTube channel where today we will be looking at the dash mechanic I made for my indie game The Trials of Beatty using Game Maker Studio 2 and its C-sharp derivative GML coding language. When I first decided to tackle coding a dash mechanic, I knew I didn't want it to be exactly like it is in other games such as Hollow Knight, Ori, and Celeste. In those games, the direction the player is facing is the direction that they dash. I wanted a bit more lateral maneuverability and much lower, basically non-existent cooldown rate. So that's what I did. If you were standing on the ground, you can't dash. You can only dash while you're in the air. This kind of just made sense for me to make it that way with how the game is laid out. Once you're in the air, whichever way you point the directional button left and right, and then press dash, you'll launch BD in that direction. You're also able to dash as many times as you want when you're in the air. There are no set parameters like there are in Celeste, for instance. Another byproduct of the dash coding was the hover mechanic, which is essentially the dash but without being launched in any direction, and it also triggers a different animation for Beatty. So let's hop into Game Maker Studio and I'll show you exactly what I did to achieve this. So here is my coding section. I first have these parameters set up. I'm checking to see if the dash button is pressed and if my player can move. If those two are true, then can dash equals true, which will allow my player to actually dash. So once can dash equals true, it checks this next set of parameters. If key dash and grounded equal false, meaning that my player is not touching the floor, then it will execute this next set of commands. Gamepad set vibration makes the controller vibrate. Can dash equals false does not allow the player to continuously dash while in the air. So you can't just freely dash in the middle of another dash. Horizontal speed plus equals move times dash speed. This sets the built-in horizontal movement and what actually makes BD dash. The move lock is now true and this does not allow the player to perform any other function. So while the move lock is true, you can't hit the jump button or run fast or anything else. This locks all movement. We set up an alarm and this will reset all the variables that are being executed right now to where they were before the dash button was pressed. Gravity equals zero, so that way the dash is in a straight line. My local vertical speed is zero, so B can't move up and down. The built-in vertical speed is also zero, so he can't move around. We've increased the friction to 0.3 from 0.2, and the X and Y scale stretch and squeeze the dash sprite for the duration of the dash. Now all of this gets reset by this alarm and brings BD back to his normal gameplay state once the dash is complete. In order to have a shorter or longer dash time, all you need to do is adjust this number right here up and down. I also have this dash audio that plays when the button is pressed. When it's all said and done, you get BD's dash that looks like this. Hopefully this shed a little light into how the dash functions in game, and I invite everyone to play the Trials of BD and tell me how you think it feels for yourself. I'd also love to hear anybody else's process in the comment section below. For those interested, I will place the code in the description and you can feel free to add this to your project, change it however you want, or keep it exactly the same. Hopefully this helps you on your own video game and coding adventure. And for those who are interested in playing the game, there will be a link in the description as well. Thank you so much for your time, please give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.